Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. What I've got here is the Meteor 65. This is a brand new 1S brushless whoop by Beta FPV. Uh, the one I have is a pre-production sample, so there's some minor differences, uh, but the final version did just come out and I've been getting tons of questions about this build and about the BT 2.0 connector. Uh, this is probably the most unique thing about this build. It does not have a PH2 connector like pretty much everything else. Uh, this is a new connector designed by Beta FPV and the whole point of this connector is to make a more secure connection to the battery and deliver uh, more current with less voltage sag. And that's a good thing for this build because this build uh, totally hogs the amps. Um, it's really hard on the batteries, you're going to get a relatively short flight time. But what you get in exchange is a crazy amount of power. Both the acceleration uh, and just the top end speed of this thing is pretty nuts. I don't think I've ever flown a 1S drone that's as fast as this. Uh, so I know you've got questions. You want to know how much this connector helps. Uh, are the batteries good enough to make a difference? How would you use other batteries? How do you charge your batteries? I'm going to try to address all of those different things. But first, let's jump into some flight footage so you can see what it looks like right here in my house. This time I set up a stationary microphone so you could also hear the drone as it zooms around my house. And pay attention to the changes in throttle sound. I'm really not using that much throttle most of the time, maybe 40 to 60% throttle. And then I'm bursting to that high throttle only momentarily, like when I come out of a turn uh, or the beginning of a straightaway, something like that. Um, the rest of the time, I'm really not using the full throttle. Uh, the speed of this drone is kind of overkill for the size space that I'm in, uh, but it is pretty fun. When I fly fast like this, I get between two and two and a half minutes of flight time. So that's not very long compared to some other builds, and the batteries do tend to come down pretty warm. Um, if you are into competitive racing with the two-minute racing format, then you may or may not have enough to finish that last lap, depending on the size of the track and how hard you push it. Um, so if that's your goal, you might want to consider using a slightly larger battery. That's what I did two weeks ago at Sumerian Brewery. I didn't have this exact build yet, but I had one with the same specs, the same motors, and I was using the MyLipo 333. Uh, that battery is amazing, and with that combo, I was definitely able to finish strong, even though I was using the PH2 connector at the time. I'll tell you more about batteries in just a minute. The camera in this drone is relatively new as well. They call it the M01, and it's a split camera and VTX combo. Uh, this is my first time using it, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. Uh, you know, these Whoop cameras never really look amazing, but this one has a wide enough FOV for flying indoors, and it's handling the light and the color in my basement here. Like I said, my house isn't really big enough to use a lot of high throttle, so the next thing I wanted to do was take it out in my backyard and see what would happen if I just tried to rip around in a bigger space. Out here it really is pretty fast and I was even able to do some of the acro moves that I would normally do with a 2S drone I was able to do with this one so that was pretty cool. Uh, it's impressive that it can do that at all but when you do it is really hard on the battery and the voltage sag starts to set in pretty early. But I don't think this really represents the kind of flying that most people are going to do on the Meteor 65. Uh, if your goal was to fly outside the way I am right here you'd be much better off with a 2S whoop. You'd get a better flight time and a lot less voltage sag. This flight ended with an arm time of 2 minutes and 2 seconds, and I really ran this battery down all the way, probably farther than I should have. Now let's head back to the bench and take a closer look at those components. Uh, you can get a good look at it here and on the bottom with that connector. Now you may notice that my frame looks a little bit scuffed up. This is a pre-production sample, and they actually painted it blue to get it that color. But you don't have to worry about the paint chipping off like this on the final product because uh, it's not going to be painted. They're just going to dye the frames uh, the color. In fact, you can choose different colors if you buy a replacement frame. The motor is 0802 22000 KV, and this is the one with the new construction. It's got bearings in the bottom, and it's got a little PCB on the bottom too. Uh, the theory with that is that if these wires ever break off, you should be able to re-solder them back on there, so that's pretty cool. Now, 22000 KV is really high, but it's not unheard of. I've been flying this for a long time. You can see the battle scars on this frame, and these are the Tiny Whoop uh, double deuce motors, uh, 22000 KV 802, so same specs as these motors. At least on paper, but in practice uh, these motors are much faster, uh, much punchier on the acceleration, and also harder on the batteries compared to these. It's got the same eggshell canopy that Beta FPV has been using for a long time. The good thing about these is you can get them from lots of different vendors and they come in different colors and things. The bad thing is you're going to need lots of them because they do tend to break. The only reason this one isn't broken is because I swapped out the canopies and used this one for the test flights and you can see this one is broken. 
On the inside, you can see it does have the new 1S F4 flight controller in there, and this is the M01 camera and VTX combo mounted in this mount. This is the 35 degree version, but it does come with a 25 degree version if that's more your style. Mine weighs in just over 23.1 grams, although I'm told that the production model will be 22.8 grams. It'll be a little bit lighter, and I think the difference is the paint on these sample frames. And then if you look at the battery, uh, 8.27. So 23 grams is not super heavy, but it's not super light either. Um, this is the build that I raced at Sumerian two weeks ago. Um, it's got almost the same components and it's like 21 grams without trying really hard. I'm pretty sure you could get it down to, uh, you know, 18 or 19 grams pretty easily and still use these same motors. Uh, you could probably still use the BT uh, 2.0 connector even. Uh, there's lots of ways to save weight. And if you want suggestions about that, then check out my video on this build. I got this one all the way down to 15.3 grams. It has smaller motors, but a lot of the same techniques could apply here as well if you're interested. I wanna point out that this canopy is not natively white. Uh, this is actually painted white, and I'm pretty sure it's that way in the final product as well. And so if you compare it to one of their solid blue or clear canopies, those are actually a little bit lighter. And then the mount adds a little bit of weight as well. Now let's take a look at the frame. This is a brand new frame design and it's lighter than their previous model. But the main thing that I like about it is that this battery tray is closer to the flight controller than it used to be. That gets the battery closer to your center of mass and it allows the drone to sit flat on the motors when it's on the ground instead of their older frame where it would kind of rock back and forth on the battery. Here's a clear version of the new frame so you can see a direct comparison. Everything about this new frame is thinner and lighter than on the previous one, uh, so that's great. The downside is that this one is definitely less durable. Uh, in particular, the hoops up here uh, squeeze a lot more easily than this one. And so what's gonna happen is if you get in a hard crash, it's going to deflect and hit the prop and make these props pop off. Uh, plus these white props provided by Beta FPV, uh, they tend to have kind of a loose fit on the hub and so they do pop off pretty easily. Personally, I prefer four blade props anyway, and these gem fan props work really well on here. The gem fan props also are tighter on the hub and I have not had these come off yet in a crash. Uh, the indoor flight footage that you saw was using props like these. It is also possible to break this frame. I managed to split one of the hoops wide open, although admittedly I was trying to power loop my deck at the time. Here you can see the weight of the new frame compared to the 65 Pro frame and the UR65. All right, now let's take a closer look at the batteries and this BT 2.0 connector, because that's kind of the hot topic. Uh, the PH2 connector has been around for quite a while, and so there are several different companies that make these batteries. They come in different sizes. You've got a lot of options. A lot of us already have a bunch of these batteries, and the only BT 2.0 connector is this new 300 million power 1S by Beta FPV. Uh, so that's gonna limit your options, and you're either gonna have to get new batteries, or an adapter, which doesn't sound like a great option, uh, or modify your batteries or modify the connector. Um, so those are kind of your choices. Any way you look at it, you're not gonna be able to use your existing batteries as is. And so I know that's gonna be a big turnoff for a lot of people. Um, so to make this switch, uh, you have to know that this connector is worth it. And so that's the big question. To put this in context, let's talk briefly about the PH2 connector. That's what I've got on here. I happen to have it mounted at 180 degrees, but this is the official connector designed and manufactured by JST. So it's got the solid pins. And this connector is rated for two amps of continuous current. And when they say that, what they mean is two amps in any operating condition, even with no ventilation, uh, even going on indefinitely. And when we fly these drones, we fly them for a relatively short time and with lots of ventilation. So we are able to get away with a lot more than two amps uh, through the PH2 connector, and we've done that for a long time. So the thing you need to understand is that the amount of power that is lost uh, to heat and the amount of voltage sag that happens, uh, that is related to the amount of current that the build is drawing. Um, if you have something like my 15 gram build here, um, this draws hardly any current. It flies for like five and a half minutes. So this one I think is doing just fine with the PH2 connector. I think it stands very little to gain. But these guys, uh, on full throttle, these 22,000 kV motors, uh, this drone will pull something like nine amps. And so that is way outside of the specifications of the PH2. If you compare the connectors up close, you can see that the outer dimensions are pretty similar. They both have 2.0 millimeter spacing, but the BT 2.0 connector, the new one, has much bigger pins. 
It's rated for 9 amps of continuous use. The other thing to know about the PH2 is that the condition of the connector can deteriorate over time. They can definitely start to get loose, and when that happens, the pin may not be fully contacting the conductors inside of the battery, and so that can hurt the performance, and they can also get corroded. If you look at the battery side of the new connector, you'll see that the pin slides into kind of a metal sheath that hugs the pin from both sides, and so that should make a pretty good connection. So I think this is a pretty cool design for a connector, but it does add about 0.3 grams compared to pH2. Alright, so is the new connector really better than using pH2 when the cells and the drones are otherwise mostly the same? Um, I can't do an exact side-by-side -side comparison, but I have flown both of these options quite a bit, and I think it does make a difference. Um, I think this one has a more consistent throttle response, and it goes a little bit longer before I start hitting that low volts warning on my OSD, uh, compared to this one flying this battery which has the same cells. Oscar Liang did a review and he actually did a bench test of these two connectors. He did it at 4 amps, which would be kind of a cruising speed for something like this. And at 4 amps, he found uh, that it was almost 0.1 volt difference uh, between the two, 0.1 volt higher on the BT 2.0. Now 0.1 volts may not sound like a lot, but when you consider that a fully charged battery is only about 1 volt higher than a fully discharged battery, uh, that's actually pretty significant and that's at 4 amps. Beta FPV did a test at 9 amps, and it shows a 0.2 amp difference between the two, and so that's even more significant. Again, the more amp draw, the more significant it is. And it'll be interesting to see this connector on larger batteries in the future, uh, because drones that use 450 to 600 milliamp hour size 1S batteries, I think, uh, stand to benefit from this connector even more than these little guys do. All right, now let's talk about the battery itself, because the connector is only as good as the cells that are behind it. So how good is this battery? Uh, first of all, you may be familiar with this battery. This is the older 300 milliamp hour battery from Beta FPV, and this battery was really pretty terrible. Probably the worst 1S battery I've used. A while back, they replaced this battery. Uh, the new PH2 batteries look like this, and this 1S is in the corner. That's how you can tell the difference. Now, this battery comes from a different supplier, and this is actually a decent battery. Um, I've compared it in flight uh, to these 300 milliamp hour batteries from GNB and Race Day Quads, and I think all three of these batteries are pretty comparable. So this is a decent battery compared to its competition, but I'd say that 300 milliamp hour is kind of the minimum spec that's viable on the Meteor 65, um, and it's not the most powerful battery available. The best performance I've seen out of this drone by far is the Tiny Whoop 333. Uh, this battery is made by MyLipo, and for whatever reason, it just outperforms everything else by a significant margin. When I fly the Tiny Whoop battery on my PH2 build, I get significantly less voltage sag and at least 30 seconds longer uh, compared to flying the BT 2.0 connector on the Meteor 65. So when you're comparing two batteries that have the same cells, the BT 2.0 connector uh, does make a difference, and having really good cells also makes a difference. When I put those two things together, uh, what it makes me want to do is put a BT 2.0 connector on this battery, and I'm going to be doing that just as soon as I get more of these connectors. If you want to have more battery options and you're willing to modify a battery, then uh, that is definitely a viable possibility. And probably the easiest way to do it is with the batteries that have wires coming out of the top, like the GMB 300 or 350. Uh, those would be super easy. You just cut the wire and solder on the new connector. I've talked to Beta FPV about open sourcing the design of the connector for other manufacturers uh, because I think it's important to have other manufacturers uh, in the game as well if this is going to be a successful connector in the long run. They've said that they are opening it up for other companies and so hopefully we'll see that in the future, but time will tell. So how would you charge a battery with this connector? I think what most people are going to do is use these adapters. Uh, I think the drone comes with one of these, but I don't think they come with the battery, so you'll probably have to get more. Uh, but what it does is it lets you plug it in to a normal Whoop charger like this. Uh, this one charges six at a time, which is pretty nice. And the other option is this charger from Beta FPV. It's nice and small, and it does double as a battery checker, which is cool, but it only charges two at once, and it's powered from USB. So if you want to charge a lot of batteries, you're going to need several of these and and several USB power supplies. The other thing you should know about this charger is that it has no settings at all. It always charges to high voltage and it always charges at a one amp rate. Uh, that's more than a 3C charging rate for this battery. Uh, that'll get them charged nice and fast, but it's pretty aggressive. Finally, people always ask me for my Betaflight tune, and so the PID values are going to be down in the description below. Uh, I am running Betaflight 357, but not the settings that come on here. I found that there were some vibrations at high throttle with those settings, and so I'm using the settings that I've used on other high KV whoops like this, and it's working really well. 
So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about this connector. Uh, not just for this drone, but I've got tons of other micros. A lot of them have the X-T30 right now, uh, which works great, but it's totally overkill for a lot of the really small builds. So this connector is going to be smaller and lighter, and I think it's going to be plenty uh, for those builds. So that'll be interesting to see. And I'm really curious to know what you guys uh, think. Are you going to try this out on different builds? Are you going to get this build? Are you just totally going to pass? Um, I'm curious to know. So let's talk about it down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, Questions, you know, feel free to ask as well. Uh, and of course, all of the products that you've seen in this, uh, there's going to be links down in the description below. It'd be cool if you could use those. And if you value this kind of content, uh, then please like and subscribe. Uh, that helps other people see it as well. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. Happy flying.